This is a topic I've had on my mind for the longest time, and it's a video idea that I was playing around with for an equally long one. If you don't want the rambling, you can always just mute and let the time lapse play. I've had a lot of fun building and painting this kit, and I don't see that much about the Masquerade Jagan, so that may prove interesting in and of itself. If I can remember, I'll also try to put in some captions for what I'm doing as well, but that ultimately comes down to how I think they look. And fair warning, this script, if you can even call it that, is pretty raw. It's maybe had a single revision or two, and this definitely is not the most cohesive thing out there, but it is out there. And disclaimer, what I'm talking about is mainly from my own experiences in the hobby, and of course, my opinion. This has not been a peer-reviewed empirical thing, I just want to talk while having some time-lapse footage play out. And yes, this time-lapse footage is probably the most extensive I'll ever take. It covers pretty much everything from start to finish, and I'll only cut things out to match however long I'm talking for. I'll also be using the word armor a lot, because that's what I used to do, but I am talking about historical models as a whole. I'll try to use the word historical as often as I can instead for the sake of accuracy, but the word armor comes naturally to me when talking about the subject. Introductions aside, let's get to our topic. Simply put, I've had a bit of a falling out with armor models and historical modeling as a whole, and like a lot of things, I found myself wondering, why? It may be simple enough to write it off as just losing interest, but as someone who overthinks absolutely everything, I figured there's more to it than that. As a bit of background, I picked up armor models when I was in middle school. I still remember my first kit, a Tamiya Type 97 Chiha. It quickly became my favorite thing and main hobby, and I've done it pretty much non-stop until about a year and a half ago. I surrounded myself in references and kits, and would always be online looking for inspiration and ways to prove my models, not to mention keeping up to date on model kit news. I do remember when Ryfield introduced their first Tiger 1, or when Tamiya put out the first new 48 scale P38 in years. And while I've suffered from burnout before, I think my transition to Gunpla and other mecha is more of a positive evolutionary thing in how I paint in miniature. You see, historical modeling has this obsession with devoting as much time as possible to recreating things. I've heard it referred to as miniatures in scale, and it's pretty much what the hobby is about. And this obsession comes with some pretty unhealthy and negative views on scale modeling as a whole, which I used to subscribe to. I think the perfect way of explaining this culture is describing how I viewed Gumpla, that is, plastic models of various mecha from the long-running Gundam franchise. Over the years I spent building armor models, I had always known what Gumpla was, and had a general idea of what it was about. And to be as overdramatic as possible, it kind of offended me. Models should be about something real instead of fictional. Snap building a kit sounded more like a toy instead of an actual model. And if a build was too easy, that meant it was simple and childish instead of mechanically complex, like a real model. There's no 7-piece track links or photo etch in Gunpla. Models couldn't be built and left in the colored plastic. You needed to paint them in historically accurate colors. And the idea of using a marker to recolor things or highlight details instead of using paint, keeping a build clean instead of weathered, absolutely unthinkable. We armor modelers don't pose and play with our kits. We leave them on a shelf to be displayed. After all, we're adults here. Historical modeling is so obsessional, even for someone like me who's never even built a full interior kit, although I have tried. I used to mix all my paints from what I could find at Walmart instead of buying the historically accurate shades, mainly because they didn't have the money. So if someone like me falls victim to these issues, it probably says a lot. Still, I used to look down on anything that wasn't historical, because it seemed like those kinds of modelers didn't have what it took to add in 100 plus rivets on a 70 second scale tank based off of some blurry photos or scratch build some detail which wouldn't be seen. And I think some historical modelers feel similar ways, even if they don't admit it. Part of it of course is positive, like a sense of accomplishment, but it can come off in negative ways, alienating those who are fine with building something quick and easy and leaving it at that. I saw something on social media years ago about armor that said everything else was just a toy. 
and I think that's the perfect way of describing the armor community. But now, I do almost exclusively Gunpla. So what changed? Well, I built a Gunpla kit, and I painted it how I wanted to, and I weathered it how I wanted to, although admittedly, it did end up looking kind of like a tank. Because once you free yourself from the constraints of historical accuracy, this hobby is so much more fulfilling. Because here's the thing, by focusing on perfect replication, you lose creativity. I have met multiple very talented armor modelers, all who do every single project based on a photo. They can't make a single decision without first making sure that it's in line with every historical reference they own. Part of me respects the commitment and attention to detail, but a bigger part of me thinks it's sad that their skill is wasted due to a lack of autonomy. And more importantly, it's boring when everything you do is based off a photo you didn't even take. And a hobby should never be boring, because then it's just a job that you aren't even getting paid for. On a similar aspect, I think it's important to mention the modelers who can get a bit aggressive when they find something that doesn't line up with historical. I think a lot of modelers have had a run-in with some guy on a website or social media who will just bash someone else's work because it's not historically accurate, even though we can never truly achieve complete historical accuracy. Now this statement is usually heard around reenactment and living history circles, but it's even more true for scale models. And oftentimes the people they criticize are beginners who are just trying to figure things out. And maybe you think I'm exaggerating just because, but I have run into these kinds of people on multiple occasions. And it's not fun. Personally, I think that mixing a dunkel gelb from a flat yellow, brown, and a green from Walmart is a lot more impressive than just going out and buying the paint, even if the hand mixed stuff isn't 100% there and the end color will get changed with weathering, but I guess I happen to disagree with the gatekeepers on that one. This, of course, brings me to the related topic of online communities. And of course, the majority of historical modelers out there are decent folks who want newer people in the community to succeed. But to these newer people, their advice can become overwhelming. And I of course know this because I was once one of these newer people. And to someone new, it may seem like they're being told that everything they're doing is just wrong because of the historical implications. Not only does someone new in the hobby have to negotiate how to paint and weather a model, they also have to figure out what kinds of paints and weathering products to use. And when companies label their products so specifically, even though a dark brown enamel wash meant for olive drab is pretty much the same thing as a dark brown enamel wash meant for dark yellow, well, you get the picture. I also feel like with armor, people are more likely to interject their own opinions on how you should paint and weather. Even if someone's post isn't asking for tips, in Gumpla, people are much more respectful of personal aesthetics. And that's great. I for one have my own style and I really don't need or want anyone trying to correct me on what I like doing, that is, unless I'm explicitly asking around for help. While I was workshopping this video, I was reminded of the things I used to not like about Gunpla, but now I've realized that's what makes Gunpla so accessible and beginner friendly. Especially for young builders and those with very little space or time. With Gunpla, you can finish a build in around a day or two without any of the fumes that come with model cement. And if you put two wrong parts together, there isn't anything to worry about since you can take them apart. This isn't just helpful for building. You can take your kits apart for a neater paint job, and if you want a certain piece of your model to look a little different while painting or weathering, just remove the part until you're ready to put it back on. You don't even need to paint your kits anyway, since they do come molded in differently colored plastic. And after you finish snapping things up, you can get started on admiring how good it looks. Everything else, painting, weathering, scratch building, are all things that are optional. With armor, it's pretty much required, especially if you want to do something like backdate your tank to a certain month of production because the kit was inaccurate. You need to buy all of these products and put in all of this work to make an armor kit look like what it's supposed to, 
when Gumpla already does that out of the box. So this is the entire point of this video, but why do I find Gumpla so much more fulfilling? Now, I touched on it a little earlier, but it's about creativity. An aspect of Gumpla I love is how I can use colors which aren't green, tan, brown, or any variations thereof. I've used deep purples and vibrant reds, I've painted things in multiple shades of oranges and in pastel pinks and purples, I've painted things in metallics and in glossy coats. And guess what? When I share these builds, people are extremely supportive. I cringe thinking how serious armor modelers would react if I did a tank based in like a pastel that wasn't based off a photo. I don't even think I would be able to paint a tank in a non-historic way without being a little uneasy. I have had moments in the past where I've asked fellow armor modelers for ideas on things that were a little different from what I'd be currently doing, and the suggestion they'd offer, although admittedly different and maybe a little bit more obscure, were always the same type of thing. A dark color, or a dark color with some sort of camouflage. It was pretty funny how I would take a break from painting one type of camouflage to go and paint some other type of camouflage. And some of the camouflage patterns armor modelers consider too bright are just lighter versions of green, brown, and tan, with maybe a yellow or a blue thrown in there, and the occasional white. You can see how this can get a little boring compared to painting something in colors which are actually bright and vibrant. And because Gumpla isn't historical, I've also experimented with how I apply paint and given that much more thought compared to when I did armor. I can experiment with my paint's properties and use those to play around with differences in opacities and textures. And I find these results to be so much more interesting than if my paint looks right, because I can decide whether or not my paint looks right. On a similar note, because armor makes you focus on what's historically accurate, there are certain things you can't do while remaining historical. For the 8 or so years I did armor, I never once painted German 3 color camouflage even though I really wanted to, and it's kind of what got me into armor modeling, and for a while it was my favorite camouflage pattern out there, and it's a very popular thing to do. But I don't have an airbrush, and I couldn't find any references showing this type of camouflage painted by hand. In this case, armor made me focus on what I couldn't do rather than what I could. And that's terrible for creativity. Now I can let my mind wander when it comes to color choice. Whenever I go out and look at my local shop's paints, I focus on the colors I think work well with each other. There's so much more room for expression. I'll think to myself, a kit will look pretty cool in yellow and then I'll paint a kit yellow. I can explore so many different colors, even for weathering. Back when I did armor, I would have had no idea what it'd be like to weather orange or yellow, or in this case, purple. Now I do, and I think I've gotten a better grasp of color because of it. That being said, it's not like I totally hate armor modeling. It's influenced a lot of what I do now. It's why I do weather builds 90% of the time. I learned how to paint with armor, and I'm glad I started Gumpla knowing what tools and paints to use. But this mentality and culture of armor is an elitist one, whether we come to admit it or not. And this of course is only true for a small minority of gatekeepers, but they say that a single rotten apple spoils a bunch, and that is so true. It's kind of sad that my hobby was ruined by this, but as I said before, I like to think of it more as an evolution. I'm still painting a lot of things, just in different ways. I realize that this is probably going to come off very negatively, especially since this problem, if it even exists, is one that won't go away. And it probably sounds like this problem is something I've manufactured just to complain on the internet and I don't even have a call to action in mind, if one even exists. But I think my recent transition to this aspect of the hobby reflects what I value now. It's individuality and expression. There's this saying about how Gumpla is freedom, and although the phrase has been overused, it really is true. The Gumpla builders I've seen have such a wealth of creativity that I find incredibly inspiring. Even if you don't customize your kits with scratch building or custom paint schemes, 
there's still a lot to enjoy, and I don't think any other aspect of model building is as friendly to all skill levels in the way Gunpla is. Armor will always be this way, just because of what it is. And it's not like I'm trying to change that, though it seems like an impossible task even if I did. And even if you could change that, would it still be armor modeling? I'm not too sure. Oh, and uh, here's the finished Jagan. Now, thank you for watching this video. I know it's a little different from what I normally do, you know, talking about a topic as opposed to walking you through how I paint something. But as I've said before, I've had this topic on my mind for a long time. But anyways, enough of me talking. I've definitely done that for far too long. Thank you for watching once again, and I'll be seeing you in the next video, whenever that is.